All right, welcome back. Um, so what we're going to do uh, over to complete the next empty checkpoint is we're going to dip our toe into the sort of wild and wonderful world of layout. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and run uh, the app in the emulator uh, so we can see it off to the side. And, you know, you can search high and low in your main activity.kt file. And you may have already noticed this. And you are still not going to find the answer to one really interesting and important question about the app, which is, why does it look this way? Like, why is there a map view component on the app at all? Why is there a search bar at the top, right? Um, and the reason that you're not going to find the answer in mainactivity.kt is that we're not looking in the right place. Mainactivity.kt and when we design our next activity, the activity files that represent these classes essentially determine how your app behaves. But most of how your app looks in terms of the layout, now there is code here that adds markers to the map, so there's a little bit of uh, an intersection between behavior and appearance, but most of the code that determines how your app looks or important part of it is in a different spot. So we're gonna navigate over here to app uh, source main res layout. And what you're gonna find here, now there's actually two layouts because I'm a kind person. I've given you the layout you need for MP2, which we'll talk about later. Um, but this, uh, this app uses this layout called activity main. And you'll see it's loaded here in mainactivity.kt. So activity main is right here and I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Now the first time, I'm gonna put the emulator away. Uh, the first time you do this, you, you may be like, oh my gosh. You know, I thought Android Studio was complicated enough and I opened this up and my mind, sort of my brain exploded. Uh, what is going on here? Um, and you know, the reality of the situation is Android Studio is an app designed for building Android applications. Android applications are user facing. They run on a user facing device, almost all of them. Some of them, you can actually write Android applications for other platforms, but most of them run on Android phones, which interact with users. And an incredibly important part of that interaction is what's called user interface design. So Android Studio includes, along with all of its code editing features, a very powerful and full featured um, tool for building layouts. Now, I will confess, I do not use this tool. Uh, I know very uh, little about it, but you can use it to build extremely complicated Android layouts with buttons and widgets and all sorts of other uh, things. And you can do this in sort of a drag and drop fashion. Right. Um, one, you know, we are not going to talk about layout very much in this class, or about UI, or about that type of design level aspect of apps. But I do want to impress on you something really important, which is that is so important and it's hard. You may become a front end designer. You know, your path in computer science may take you in that direction. You may end up working with them, but respect what they do because it is very, very hard and there's a lot of art and science to it. When you use an app on your phone and you're like, oh, this is super intuitive, it just makes sense. All the buttons are in the right spot, the flows between screens are all very intuitive. It just makes sense. That's a credit to the people who designed it. You may also, and I can think of one right now, I'm not gonna name any names to protect the guilty, but you may also use apps where it's always a little bit of a battle because it's just like, why is that there? Why do I have to do that to get to that place? Like that button doesn't seem like it should do that thing. And that's, you know, bad, bad layout, uh, bad design. So design is super important, not something that we cover a lot in this class. If you're interested and there are other courses you can take, but this is sort of the window into the features that Android Studio provides for you to do this. Now, what you'll see here in this, what's called the design view, is we see a little bit of kind of like, here's how the app might look on the screen. Now, the map view hasn't been populated here, but I can see the search bar. And then here's more of like a mock-up view where it shows me kind of what's in each spot. Now, what I'm gonna show you is, you might wonder like, how is this represented under the hood? It's represented in code. This is the code view. Now, what we're looking at here is something called XML. XML is not a programming language. It is a markup language. The ML and XML stands for markup language. The X stands for extensible. So XML is a markup language. We use programming languages to determine how things work, how things behave. That's the stuff in mainactivity.kt. In activitymain.xml, this is language that is, uh, or, or this is code that is used to determine how something looks or how it's structured. 
So for example, the reason that the app has a search bar is because there's a toolbar here with a search view widget inside of it. And we're actually about to use that widget in the next part of this checkpoint. So for example, let's say I take this out and you can, you know, you can run some experiments here and, and mess around. It's totally cool. You're, gonna, you're not going to break anything. And if you do, you can use undo to get back to where you were. But let's see what happens if I take this out. And what you'll see is, voila, no search bar. No search bar on the layout, no search bar on the screen. Let's put it back because uh, we need it. We're going to use it in a minute. Um, now let's try something else. Let's say, okay, what about instead of, you know, and, and what these mean is, is a little complicated, but essentially what this is doing is it's telling the map view you should use all of the height on the screen that's available. Instead, now I'm going to tell it to only use a fixed height. And so what we're going to see if I run this is that now the map view loads, but it's short. It's this little map view. That's not very much fun. That's not very useful because there's all this dead space down here, right? It's kind of silly. So uh, I'll go back and, and put that back to the way it was. Um, and, you know, essentially you can find out a lot more about this. It's great documentation online if you're interested in this sort of thing. Um, and layout uh, is, is hard and fun and, um, you know, uh, really important. Right, or a really, really critical part of the user experience for, for people who are using uh, technology in the world. Um, all right, so I've gone back to the original layout um, and I'm gonna rerun the app and it's going to load up and, and this is what I'm gonna see. So it's the interplay between these two files that is really important for us to understand or we need to understand a little bit of it. So for example, the uh, layout is what, why there's a map view component on the display. But the markers are not in here because the markers come from the data that we load from the server in the process that we described earlier. So one of the things that the code typically in an activity class will do is it will manipulate the components that are loaded in the layout. So here's an example of this. So I load this map view component and then later I'm gonna put the markers on it. Um, now, in order to do this, we need to have an agreement between the layout and this component about how to name things, and that's right here. So you'll see that the map view has this ID map, and then over here in the main activity, I load that using find view by ID, and this gives me a handle to something called a map view, and then that map view has these methods that are determined by kind of what type of layout component it is. In this case, I can do things like center it, like zoom, like pan, like add marker student, stuff like that. That's because it's a map view. In a minute, we're gonna use a similar approach to uh, enable the search bar, the search view, and make it useful to us, allow us to interact with it. We'll talk a little bit more about that and about what we call a callback programming pattern in our next video.